Hey there everybody, it's me Cody on Microsoft, where today we'll be taking a look at what's new in Windows 11 Insider Preview Build 22000.51. Unlike the previous leaked build of Windows 11, Microsoft recently publicly released Build 22000.51 to all Windows Insiders on the dev channel. Build 22000.51 is also the first build of Windows 11 to become available for testing to the general public. Microsoft welcomes developers and Windows enthusiasts alike to try out the new features coming to Windows 11 before they're released. Today, we're going to take a look at some of those things. By this point, most of you have probably already seen Microsoft's new Start Menu design for Windows 11. To recap, the Start Menu and Taskbar icons are now all centered on the Windows desktop. You'll find new icons, fonts, and rounded corners everywhere you look. New sound effects and animations complement the updated style to help bring the UI to life. Despite being the first publicly available preview build of Windows 11, everything looks polished and well thought out. There are still plenty of new features in this build of Windows 11 that were not present in the build that leaked earlier last month. Some of these new features relate to the system tray area. For years, the system tray area absorbed countless random features haphazardly flung into the corner. Microsoft is finally trying to untangle this mess in Windows 11, and with Build 22000.51, we get a glimpse of what Microsoft has been working on. To start, the date and time flyout has been merged with the notifications area to create a new notification center. Missed notifications will appear in notification center just like they did in action center in Windows 10. Also, unlike Windows 10, the Notification Center calendar does not currently integrate with your PC's calendar app. This calendar will not display or allow you to create calendar events. The quick actions from the old Action Center have been grouped with the volume and network flyouts to create quick settings. At the bottom of quick settings, there's a shortcut to the system settings and an edit layout button. Just above that are sliders for brightness if your PC supports it, and volume. At the very top, you'll find media controls that will appear when supported apps are open, such as Microsoft Edge or Spotify. In the center of quick settings, all the same toggles from Windows 10 are present in a much more user-friendly layout. Many of these quick settings extend into submenus simply by clicking on an arrow. Like the taskbar, quick settings contains lots of new UI animations. All of the icon glyphs come to life with fun little animations when clicked. Some work still does need to be done in order to polish up the system tray area, however. The taskbar overflow tray is still unchanged and quickly fills up with applets from various applications that run in the background. This includes many of Microsoft's own apps like Teams or OneDrive. With both of these apps set to feature heavy integration in Windows 11, it would make sense for Microsoft to consider moving their features elsewhere. OneDrive's system tray flyout would probably make more sense as a widget. In fact, build 22000.51 does include a OneDrive widget, but only for OneDrive Photos on this day last year. Several other new widgets are also now available in this build, including Sports, Calendar, To Do, and more. Widgets like To Do show that Microsoft intends them to be a little bit more interactive than live tiles on the start menu ever were. Despite this, all of the widgets are powered by Microsoft's web services rather than their corresponding apps. Because of this, it seems unlikely that more advanced widgets like OneDrive Sync could be developed for this experience. Windows 11 Build 22000.51 includes the first part of Microsoft's effort to revamp the File Explorer. In previous builds, Microsoft updated all of File Explorer's skeuomorphic icons to match their new design language. Now, Microsoft has distilled the contents of the ribbon into a new toolbar. The new toolbar is minimal and contains action buttons for creating new files, interacting with selected files, sorting, and adjusting the layout. Additional options specific to the open folder also become available with an ellipsis menu to the right. In addition to the new toolbar, Microsoft has updated all of the context menus in File Explorer to align with Windows 11's latest design principles. Like everything else in Windows 11, these context menus feature rounded edges and new iconography. Not only that, the menu options are now organized much more intuitively. The clipboard controls are all grouped together and placed next to the mouse pointer in one section. 
So if I open a context menu from the bottom of the screen, the clipboard controls are at the bottom of the context menu. However, if I open the context menu at the top of the screen, the clipboard controls are at the top. In either scenario, the clipboard controls are close to the mouse cursor when opened. Separate sections exist for file options, sync options, and third-party add-ons. Interestingly, there's now also a Show More Options option, which will open up the Legacy context menu for the selected item. Unfortunately, no, it doesn't appear like the tabs in File Explorer are on the table for Windows 11. Microsoft did experiment with this idea back in 2017 with a feature called Sets. Sets started by asking why users might have wanted to have tabs in File Explorer in the first place. This led to one likely scenario, which is uh, perhaps someone was working on a complex project in one app that required pulling files from multiple drives or directories. Then the thought became, well, what if all the windows associated with that task could be grouped into tabs under a single window, not just the File Explorer windows? The project started to become a little bit too confusing and ultimately ended up getting shelved. For Windows 11, Microsoft is instead investing in other ways to improve the multitasking experience. Every major version of Windows comes with new multitasking features, and Windows 11 will be no exception. The same Windows snapping capabilities from Windows 10 still work in Windows 11, only now with a few new improvements. Like before, you can snap Windows by dragging them to various edges around the screen, and Windows will suggest apps to snap beside them. In Windows 11, even more layouts for snapping Windows are available by hovering the mouse pointer over the Maximize button. The snap layouts available to you will depend on the size of your screen. Larger screens will have more options than smaller ones. Snapped windows will then appear as groups in the taskbar previews, allowing multiple windows which were snapped together to be restored at once. Microsoft is also looking to improve the docking and undocking experience in Windows 11. Windows opened on an external display will now be minimized when disconnecting the display and upon reconnecting the display, the windows previously opened on it will be automatically restored. Moving on to another experience here in Windows 11 that inevitably is going to receive plenty of new features by the time it's released, Settings has been completely redesigned. The categorization of settings in this new app is more or less exactly how it was in Windows 10, so users who are already familiar with where things were in previous versions of Windows will have no problem locating them here. What has changed, however, is the layout and presentation of everything in the new settings. All of the sections in the new settings app are now on the left pane. These sections will stay there no matter where you navigate in the app. Along the top, there's a path of breadcrumbs that remind you where you've navigated from. Every page in the Windows settings has been completely redesigned to help you understand what you're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and navigate into the Personalization section in the Settings app, and you can see the new Personalization page opens on the right pane. Of course, if I want to change my accent color to, say, Dark Mode, I'll go ahead and click on Colors, and you'll see that the color section now replaces it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and choose my uh, Windows color theme here from the default light to dark to match my preferred version of the Windows theme. Um, of course, this wallpaper by default doesn't really match this, so I'm going to once again click on this breadcrumb along the top here, and instead choose a Windows theme here, the dark Windows theme, which already includes a wallpaper which matches the color scheme a little bit more closely. Anyways, unfortunately, as of right now, many of the sections in the new settings still open up legacy control panel windows. If I, for instance, navigate here to System and then Sound along the bottom, you'll find a shortcut to the legacy windows volume controls. Um, of course, these old uh, control panel applets here don't really adhere to the modern Windows theme very well, which is, uh, again, one of the common criticisms about the UI in Windows 10. I like to recall how very old versions of Windows using the classic theme could easily change window colors and text, yet modern versions of Windows still haven't figured out how to implement the same functionality. I'm sure that this is something that Microsoft will be able to address by the time that Windows 11 is released. Speaking of window backgrounds, Settings is a great example of Microsoft's new Mica effect that can be applied to apps in Windows 11. Similar to acrylic in Windows 10, Mica is semi-transparent and blurs out content behind it. Mica, however, is much more subtle than acrylic, and only samples from the desktop wallpaper. This effect gives the impression that Windows and Windows 11 are part of a shared environment.
Windows settings also has a few new options in this build of Windows 11. We did touch on a couple of them a moment ago, but if we navigate over here into the personalization section again, we'll find a new settings page for the touch keyboard. Here, there are several included themes to choose from. The poppy red, ice blue, and platinum themes complement Microsoft's type cover colors. There are also several other options for customizing the appearance of the touch keyboard, including custom themes, text size, and finally, the size of the keyboard itself. As for the touch keyboard itself, it's been completely re-engineered for a more pleasant touch typing experience in Windows 11. Windows Insiders have had the opportunity to test many of these changes in earlier builds of Windows 10, but it's here in Windows 11 that all of these changes come together. This new keyboard comes to life with more intelligent typing, new sounds, effects, and features. The Microsoft Store is another app which has been completely redesigned in this build of Windows 11. Like settings, the store currently offers more or less the same content as the previous app with a new layout guided by Windows 11's design principles. Microsoft will continue to promote the use of the store with Windows 11. To help with this effort, Microsoft has opened up the store to all apps developers might want to bring, including UWP, PWA, Xamarin, Electron, .NET, React Native, Java, and even Win32 apps. Microsoft will even allow developers to use third-party commerce platforms in their apps, which will let them keep 100% of the revenue earned from purchases. Microsoft has also made it easier for developers to create links on their own websites that direct users to their apps in the Microsoft Store, giving users the peace of mind they're downloading apps from a safe place online. Hopefully, these efforts will encourage more developers to get on board with bringing their apps to the Microsoft Store. Additionally, Microsoft recently announced a partnership with Amazon that will bring Android apps from the Amazon App Store to Windows 10. Right now, none of these features are in effect. However, as Microsoft continues to build Windows 11 over the coming months, Windows Insiders will be the first to get to test them out. Some of the other noteworthy changes here in this build of Windows 11 include Microsoft adding support to the new Wi-Fi 6E standard. Devices with compatible hardware and updated with the latest drivers should be able to experience the full effects of the new Wi-Fi 6E standard. Another interesting new thing here is that Microsoft is adding extended support for displays with high refresh rates, including a new feature Microsoft calls Dynamic Refresh Rate, which is basically their own standard for a variable refresh rate displays. Of course, like the Wi-Fi 6C, this will require that your PC has a display which is compatible with this feature, has a refresh rate of at least 120Hz, and has the uh, latest drivers and version of Windows installed. The changes presented here are available in Windows 11 build 22,000.51 to users enrolled in the Windows Insider program under the Dev Channel. I wouldn't recommend installing development builds of Windows 11 on your device specifically to have access to any of these features. These builds can be buggy, so installing them may lead to unexpected issues or system instability. No, your PC most likely won't explode. However, Microsoft cannot guarantee system stability with development builds of Windows 11. The only way to return to Windows 10 after installing these builds may be completely resetting your PC. Should you want to try these builds out for yourself, proceed with caution. If you found this video interesting or would like to keep up to date about what's going on with Microsoft and Windows 11, make sure to subscribe to this channel and check out our website on Microsoft.com for more info. This has been me, Cody. Thank you. Goodbye.